So you've just been diagnosed with osteoporosis. The doctor wants you to maybe take medications, or at least think about taking it. You're a little hesitant because you've heard some horror stories, and you want to try to manage it maybe more naturally with supplements or exercise. But are the supplements and exercise as effective as taking some of the osteoporotic medication? I'll tell you what I tell all my clients. Hey everyone, welcome to the front row, Ed Dubu, physical therapist out of Bellingham, Washington at Integrated Physical Therapy. So patients will often ask me, look Ed, I just got diagnosed with osteoporosis. Uh, what do you think I should do? Should I take the medications or not? So first of all, that's a discussion that you need to have with your doctor, with your spouse, with your family, decide what's best for you. There are side effects of the medications. I don't want to be that person or have my wife be that person in that one in 1000 that has osteonecrosis of the jaw or a atypical fracture of the femur or esophageal cancer. So there are some risks of these medications, there's no doubt, just like there is risk for any type of medication. But the scope of this video is to talk mainly about whether or not the efficacy or how well the drugs performed compared to a regimen of supplements and exercise. There was a study done back in 2012 it was called the COMB study, C-O-M-B, it's an acronym for the combination of micronutrients for bone. And what they did was researchers scoured the literature and they looked at different micronutrients that have been proven through separate studies that have been beneficial for bone growth. In order for bones to grow well, think about it almost like you wanna grow something with the right nutrients in the soil. So it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, we all talk about calcium and vitamin D, which are critical, but there's a whole host of other micronutrients that are also responsible. This is the way they designed the study. They had two groups. One group was taking the biphosphonate, the medication for osteoporosis. The other group was taking a cocktail, if you will, of six different supplements. And I'll list all the supplements as well as how much in this particular study they were taking down below in the comments and so you don't have to worry about writing it down. But there were six different supplements combined with daily impact exercises. So what were the six supplements? Vitamin D3, 2,000 IUs. Vitamin K2, 100 micrograms a day. Strontium, 600 milligrams a day. Magnesium, 25 milligrams a day. DHA, 250 milligrams a day. Calcium, 1,200 milligrams, but mainly from dietary sources. What I tell my clients is that we have to be careful about over supplementing because calcium, for example, you can get too much of a good thing. So what I recommend to my clients is take a food log for approximately three days to get an average intake of calcium per day. Most people end up eating the same thing. So I usually have a cup of yogurt in the morning and then I usually have a little bit of cheese here and a little bit of milk there. But either way, keep a log, measure it out, get an idea of how much calcium you're getting from your food. And then supplement as needed to get up to that 1200-ish range on a daily basis as well as daily impact exercises. In the clinic, I really stress to my clients, you wanna lift as heavy as you can safely and for what you may have going on. So a lot of my clients that do have osteoporosis are 58 or age 50 and older. And so I'll tell them, look, you may have some other things going on. For example, if you have knee arthritis, you may not wanna do heavy back squats because that'll just blow up your knee, make you sore, and then you're not gonna to wanna to go back to exercise. So you wanna go as heavy as you can that is safe for you. Higher impact activities, if you're playing pilkball, tennis, multi-directional activities with impact are really great for building bone density. Walking, for example, isn't great for building bone density because there's not enough resistance, there's not enough impact, whereas walking is great exercise, but ideally you really wanna have higher impact by weights if you can. So after one year, what do the results of the study say? Amazingly, the supplement and exercise group did just as well when they rescanned and did another bone density as the group that did the medications for osteoporosis. So what that tells us is that as long as you're consistent with your supplementation and your exercises, you may have another option if you don't wanna be the one that takes the prescription medication, the biphosphonates or the Fosamax or anything like that for your bone density. Before you start any supplementation, make sure you talk to your physician about this. Print out the comb study, ask your physician about them, make sure that this cocktail of supplements is gonna be something that works for you. I just thought this was a great study 
It's a great option that I give my clients. And, uh, you know, it's always nice to know that we can try to take care of things without necessarily pharmacology if we don't need it. I'm not anti-medication at all, but I always stress biology before pharmacology. All right, hope this video was helpful. If you found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss another one of our videos. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below. All right, thank you for watching and go build some bone.